Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Every year, hundreds of children die, and uh, thousands more are injured in firearms-related accidents that are generally a result of negligence, ignorance, or carelessness. The real sad thing is that these tragedies could be avoided through a combination of education and prevention. The reality is, in this country, depending on which study you read, there are over 100 million privately owned firearms. And again, depending on which study you read, between a third and half of American households have a gun. That makes guns as real a hazard to children's safety as the dishwasher detergent under the sink, the pills in the medicine cabinet, the laundry detergent in the laundry room, things that as parents we automatically seek to protect our children from. As parents, no matter how we personally feel about guns, love them or hate them, and I suspect we have the entire spectrum of that represented here tonight, we have an obligation to do what we can to help our children avoid gun-related accidents. Now, if it will make everybody feel any better, that video is a fake. Okay. Some people very tense. Over the course of the next 20 minutes, or until somebody kicks me in the shins because I often lose track of time, I'd like to talk with you a little bit about how you can talk with your children about guns and educate them in a constructive, positive manner that will reduce the possibility that they will do something dumb if they encounter a gun out in the wild, whether in a friend's home, whether in your home, whether, as Lisa mentioned, in a park. And I can sort of see from some of the expressions, people are going, well, you know what, you don't have guns. And none of my friends have guns. And I wouldn't socialize with people who have guns. Maybe not so much in this neighborhood right now. But the reality is they're everywhere. There was an incident about four months ago in a little neighborhood off of Burn, less than a mile from here, where a neighborhood watcher was out in the morning driving their little route and identified someone walking up driveways and peering in windows and looking very suspicious. They started to approach that individual and backed off very quickly because they saw that he was carrying a gun in his hand. Immediately called 911, and in the plus or minus five minutes that it took for the police to respond, and somewhere in the three blocks that this guy ran after seeing that he'd been noticed, he did the gun in the middle of a large neighborhood with obviously lots of kids because there were play sets and playgrounds and things in all of the yards. A group of about 12 concerned neighbors and about six City of Atlanta police officers who weren't on duty at the time spent three hours crawling around the neighborhood trying to find that gun. We never did. Now, it was probably dumped on the railroad tracks under that bridge that crosses over Burn, so if you live in that neighborhood, please don't panic. But would your child know what to do if they were playing at a friend's house and reached under the play yard or reached under the porch and found a shiny L-shaped metal object? I'd like to talk with you about how you can make sure that your children do know what to do under those circumstances. I'd also like to talk to you about some things that you, we, a parent as well, as parents can do from a prevention standpoint to help minimize the possibility that our children will be exposed to guns outside of appropriate adult supervision. And lastly, I'd like to leave you with a proposal. The first group that I want to talk about, though, as we start on that topic about talking with your children about guns are pre-K to third grade. And I'm just curious how many people here have kids in, in that. Wow, OK. Well, actually, I'm sorry, given the ages of the charter school, that shouldn't be a surprise. Sorry, my, mine isn't quite there yet. So uh, I was thinking you guys might be a little bit older. Um, this is a really challenging age to raise this topic with for a bunch of reasons, including the fact that my clicker isn't working. There we go. Um, the first is kids this age oftentimes, especially at the younger end of the spectrum, don't know what guns are. Uh, I had printed out a, 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 a little line art drawing of a pistol for something that I was getting ready to teach, and my two-and-a-half-year-old at the time walked up and said, what's that? And I said, well, Max, what do you think it is? And he looked at it, and he looked at it, and he looked at it. It's the letter L. So kids might not know what guns are or what they're capable of, and this is a hard thing to explain at this age. There might need to be some creativity involved with explaining what guns are. Um, some kids at this age, as you all know, I mean your parents, are curious. And what's more, guns are machines. When you get right down to it, they're a machine, just like the stapler, just like the pencil sharpener. 
and they're going to be intriguing to children of either gender and anywhere in this age range. They're interesting things that have moving parts. So if they encounter them, they're probably going to handle them. Lastly, kids at this age have an inherent trust that the world is going to take care of them. They're oftentimes only peripherally aware, if aware at all, that there are things out there that can hurt them. So talking with kids at this age about gun safety can be challenging, but it can all come down to one very simple message, and you can, well, I'm going to read it to you anyway. You can see it there on the screen. The key message at this age is if you see a gun, there's no differentiation at this age between a toy gun and a real gun, a loaded gun or an unloaded gun. If you see a gun, something that looks like what mommy and daddy have described the gun as being, there are four things to do. Stop what you're doing right away. Don't touch it. Leave the area. That might require a little explanation at an earlier age. What's an area? Leave the room. What have you. Go find an adult that you trust, preferably not a stranger, and tell them what you found. This very simple message can save the lives of children in this age range if they encounter guns in the wild outside of adult supervision. Now, it's a simple message. But delivering it to children is actually very difficult and very nuanced depending on the age of the child. Fortunately, there is a very good resource available, although it comes from a little bit of an unlikely source. The NRA, not everybody's favorite organization, I know, invested hundreds of thousands of dollars working with child education specialists, reading specialists, sociologists, family health advocates to develop the Eddie Eagle Gun Safety Program. This program is designed to get that simple, life-saving message across to your children. Stop, don't touch, leave the area, tell an adult. It is supported by a video, a clip of which you're going to see here, which is appropriate for the entire age range. It's supported by workbooks differentiated between kindergartners or pre-K to first grade and then second and third graders. It is supported by lesson plan, a curriculum that can be integrated into a school safety day or a conversation with parents at home. No matter how you feel about guns, no matter how you might feel about the NRA from a political perspective, they got this one right. And the reason that there's only one resource up here on the screen is because I did my homework. There is not another resource out there that teaches children what to do if they encounter guns. Even the American Academy of Pediatrics program is one line, don't have guns in the house, which may or may not apply, may or may not be workable, and certainly doesn't address what to do if kids encounter guns somewhere else. Now, fourth to sixth grades don't get any easier. How many people, just out of curiosity, have kids in this age range? All right, well, for those of you who aren't raising your hands, obviously you will. <laughs> so this might be something worth taking a look at. This is also a really challenging age to talk about with guns. Number one, this actually may be the age range where your children have initial exposure to guns. It may be through a friend's house, through a friend's parent, through your own household, if you own guns, if you're a gun enthusiast, this may be the age where you actually introduce children to shooting sports. It might happen through youth organizations like the Boy Scouts or law enforcement explorers. Gun toys are darn prevalent at this age, and many gun toys are highly realistic, except they don't blow large holes in things. Uh, airsoft, paintball, there are a lot of gun analog sports out there, and it gets really hard to tell. And I've got to tell you what, because I use airsoft guns to train are almost indistinguishable from the real thing. It's awfully hard to tell the difference. <laughs> Hollywood and, and cartoons and, and movies definitely take their toll at this point. What happens when the hero shoots somebody? They fall over dead, nice and neat. What happens when the hero gets shot? They go, ow. Yeah. Um, a lot of children at this age, even though they might intellectually understand, they don't emotionally understand what a gun can do. They don't understand the harm that it can cause. And a lot of the accidental shootings that I talked about at the opening of the presentation happen in this age range because of that ignorance. They point a gun at someone and believing that they might go, ow, or hey, their older brother shot somebody with an airsoft pistol and they went, ow, that it's all going to be OK. Lastly, this is the age when kids really start spending a lot of time outside the supervision of their parents, and in many cases, outside of immediate adult supervision. 
I know things have changed since we were that age, but kids are going to walk from school to a friend's house, or they're going to have after-school activities where they may actually be, to a certain extent, on their own. And so there is an increased chance in this age range they may encounter guns, and it is critical that they understand what they should and shouldn't do. So a couple of points about talking with kids at this age. What are some of the key messages? Well, that Eddie Eagle message, stop, don't touch, leave the area, tell an adult, applies here as well, but the message has to be delivered a little bit differently. You show that video to a fourth grader and they're probably going to get offended. You might need to talk about it in more of an adult way. You know, honey, we don't have guns in the house, but some of your friends might, and I want to let you know that if you see a gun at a friend's house, this is specifically what I want you to do, one, two, three, four. Or, honey, you know that we have guns in the house, daddy's taken you shooting before, it's really important that you understand if, if, if you see a gun and mommy or daddy aren't around, this is what we need you to do. Uh, toy guns versus real guns. Big issue. Very, very difficult issue to talk about at this age. I've done it. it it's really hard. I'm afraid shock value is oftentimes the only way to go, and unfortunately there are plenty of examples out there, very graphic ones that can be shown to children, there are some less graphic examples, and I'll show you one in a minute, that, that can really help kids understand what, what the deal is with real guns. Hollywood versus reality, hopefully, by this, hopefully you can have the conversation that what happens in the movies, what happens in the cartoons isn't real. They kind of get that, so you have to emphasize that when it comes to guns. I think it's really important at this age, no matter how you personally feel about guns, to let your children know that it's okay to ask questions. If it's a taboo topic, this is the age where they're going to start developing more curiosity about the things that they've been told explicitly they can't have or can't ask about or can't touch. Okay? I grew up in a household that was incredibly anti-gun. And by this age, I was more interested in guns than anything else in the world because mom and dad told me, uh-uh. Lastly, it's important to let your kids know at this age that they're not going to be punished if they act safely that they went over to little Eddie's house, that Eddie showed them a gun doesn't mean they're going to get in trouble. That they touched it and played with it and didn't immediately stop, didn't touch, left the area, tell an adult, they're going to get in trouble. If they behave safely, they're not going to be punished. If they behave safely, they're doing the right thing. Now, again, kind of a challenging issue to talk about with this age range. It's easier to have a conversation with fourth and sixth graders, of course, but there's still some nuances and methods that can be hard to get across. There are two resources that I've found that are very useful in this regard. The first, which is the video that's playing now, is called Staying Safe Around Guns, the middle school edition. Why the middle school edition? We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, this was actually produced by the New Hampshire Coalition for Firearm Safety, which is a really interesting marriage of firearms manufacturers, pro-gun, and anti-gun groups. It's a really interesting marriage in the name of enhancing childhood safety. It does, it's distributed free of charge on the internet by Ruger, who, yes, is a firearms manufacturer, but it's free, so if, you're, if you uh, have negative feelings about guns, you're not supporting Ruger, and if you download it from their site, uh, it's also available on YouTube, and it does a really good job of covering off on a lot of those messages that I outlined. One of my favorite scenes, which actually isn't in this little clip that's up here, has a firearms instructor talking with a couple of kids of, of this age at the range, and he grabs a, a Coke can and walks up to a, a young man, sixth grade boy, holds it up to his arm and says, can't about the size of your arm, right? And the kid goes up and says, yeah. Firearm instructor walks down range, puts the can of Coke on, the, on a table, puts a wooden board in front of it, and then pulls a little 22 caliber shell out of his pocket. It's the tiniest little, you'd think it was a toy. And says, this is, you know, little weakest bullet that's out there. Proceeds to load a rifle, behaves safely, shoots, the round goes through the board and the can just explodes. He walks back up to the little boy with the can in his hand and puts it back up next to his arm and says, do you understand what these can do? That's the scene that's actually in this video, not the clip that I have up here, but it's very powerful and it helps with that shock value message. The second one is actually a program of PAX USA, which I believe has the tagline of uh, Real Solutions to Gun Violence. It's a coalition of a lot of different organizations, including the Department of Justice, uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Medical Association, a nice blend of organizations. And the Speak Up campaign is about just that. We have to teach our kids that it is okay to tell 
if they encounter a gun or somebody has a gun that shouldn't. They produce public service announcements, they produce brochures, they produce a nice little talking sheet for you to use with your children, they produce nice posters like this one that can be put up in schools, and it basically provides the education and the means to report if somebody has a gun that shouldn't. It's another life-saving method. Well, they're all gonna get here eventually, teenagers. I have a 13-year-old sister, by the way, my father, goes to bed every night going, what did I do? Uh, but in seeing him deal with, with Lydia, boy, I now understand how much of a pain in the neck I must have been at that age. And, and, and well, teenagers have unique challenges, especially on this subject. For starters, at this age, they're going to have a lot of conflicting influences. Your household may not like guns and be very anti-gun, but they may have friends, relatives, other people they're exposed to who are gun enthusiasts. Conflicting influences, conflicting messages, they're at an age where they have to start making up their own minds what they think is good or bad. Next, well, this is obvious, teenagers at this age want to be independent, and that usually manifests itself in the form of some kind of rebellion. Okay, I can tell you at this age, in my household, where I couldn't even play with gun toys, guess what I did every weekend with my friend who had BB gun? Peer pressure. Yeah. This applies to guns, drugs, sex, everything. But it's there, and it's something to think about. Your children may be exposed to people who want them to handle guns who shouldn't, and they want them to do things that they shouldn't. And so the peer pressure element has to be considered at this age as well. And lastly, this is an age where children may have a lot more access to guns. This is an age where many children actually get their own guns in uh, households that are firearms enthusiasts. Um, this may be an age where friends start to own guns. This may be an age where they get involved with more activities that are shooting sports. You'd be amazed how many high schools in Atlanta, for example, still have rifle teams. I mean, I have to support that sport, so I don't speak to it thoroughly, but it's a way the children might have access to guns. So what do you do with your teenagers? Well, there are a couple of key messages here, and you'll see if the messages do really kind of start to change at this age. Number one, a gun is never a way to express an emotion. It is not a way to express anger. It is not a way to express jealousy. It is not a way to express being sad. It is not a tool for emotional output. Number two, and this goes back to that Speak Up campaign, it's okay to tell an adult if somebody has a gun. Okay? Now, if the nice police officer has a gun, you probably don't need to go and, and, and tell the teacher. If the friend whose father happens to be a firearms instructor has guns in his house, you probably don't need to run away and tell somebody that if it's a problem. But if another child has a gun, if an older kid might not be where he or she should be has a gun, it's okay to tell an adult. It's also okay if by that age, this age, they determine, I don't like guns. I'm not comfortable around them. This is a great age to make sure that they understand it's okay to ask somebody to put it away. Hey, Charlie, I, look, I know that you got that 22 rifle for your birthday, and I'm happy for you, but come on, man. I, I, I don't want to look at it. Can you put it away? I'm asking you to put Okay, listen, we'll, we'll get together later when, when, you're done, when you're done with that. And then lastly, if guns are to be handled, handle them responsibly. Now, this may apply to a household where there are guns, where parents are gun enthusiasts. They are introducing their children to guns. It's critically important that parents not only explain but demonstrate how to handle guns safely. Child see, child do, even at this age. But you know what? It's important even for households that don't have guns, households that have parents that don't like guns. It's probably worth making sure that your child knows how to handle one safely in case somebody walks up and hands them one. Which happens. So what do we do at this age? Again, a couple of resources that I've found that I think that will be very helpful for you. The first is, Remember I said middle school edition? Here's the high school edition. There is a staying safe around guns high school edition. This one's a little longer, about 22 minutes. The last one was about 17. Same organization put it together using the same standards. It's distributed by the same company. Ruger has it available for download. This is, as you can tell just from the little video clip that's up here, this is directed towards teenagers. This addresses scenarios that teenagers might find themselves in and I've got to tell you what, none of, the, none of the resources that I've outlined, even the NRA at Eagle stuff, make a judgment call on guns, guns good, guns bad. This video doesn't make a judgment call, but it sure as heck tells your teenager what to do if somebody starts shooting. 
It lets them know how to identify a potential issue, and it gives them guidance on what they might be able to do in order to protect themselves and their friends. It also does a great job of scaring the daylights out of them. I will tell you, there is a law enforcement officer on here I wouldn't want to meet in a well-lit alley, much less a dark one. Um, some of the scenarios, and these are child actors, they are doing this with firearms that have been checked and rechecked and are safe. These are very real scenarios that they might face. And you saw that the narrators, the presenters, are teenagers themselves. It does a great job of peer counseling on the topic. A few other resources. The Speak Up campaign that I mentioned earlier, again, no less relevant at the high school level as it is at the middle school level. Local law enforcement often has programs around gun safety, and I will let you know some of that is desensitization, as in, here's a gun, here's how it works, let's go to the range and shoot one so you know what one is. Let's teach you a little bit about safe gun handling, so if you ever do handle one, you know what to do. I wish I knew what City of Atlanta did in this regard. Unfortunately, my one contact there who would address this is no longer with the force. I will try and find out, and I will share that information back to Lisa if I can. Uh, gun clubs and ranges often do events for kids. And, and again, I, I recognize some people here may not like guns, and so boy, the thought of your child going to a range and shooting a gun is kind of scary, but that desensitization is oftentimes one of the best ways to deal with that curiosity factor, to deal with that rebellion factor, and if it's done in a very safe environment, it's better than them going over to old Charlie's house to, to play with the 22. Uh, firearm safety instructors, and I am one, we'll talk to kids anytime we have the opportunity. So there's me here in the neighborhood. There are many others uh, throughout the state. I'm not talking about paid classes. I'm talking about people who are concerned about children's safety and are absolutely happy to come talk to parents and kids about guns and how to stay safe. And lastly, hunter education instructors. Uh, I know that for some people, there's a, there's a difference between firearms that have a defensive purpose and firearms that have a hunting purpose. Hunting safety instructors will teach exactly the same thing, but it may be more palatable to a family that doesn't like guns. Now, a couple of things for your parents, or I should say us parents. We can't just educate our kids. There are things that we ourselves have to do, and we have to ask other people that may come into contact with our children to do to help us keep them safe. Number one, how many people here ask their children, friends, parents if there are a gun in the house? Okay, not many. Uh, the organization, this is Hacks USA again, that operates the Ask campaign, Asking Saves Kids, estimates that about 19 million households in the U.S. ask that question. That's out of well over 100 million households. This is a critical question to be asked. Would you ask whether or not they had a dog if the child was allergic? Would you ask whether or not they had a bully breed? Would you ask whether or not there was a lock on the medicine cabinet? Would you ask whether or not the kid's room where they're going to be playing can be seen or heard from where the parents are going to congregate? Of course we ask these questions. Is there a gun in the house? Is there a gun where my child plays? Is an important question to ask. Now, if the answer is no, it's a fairly simple conversation. If the answer is yes, that's the point where, as parents, you need to make some personal decisions. You might say, I I'd kind of like it if you came over to my place instead, if that just makes you so uncomfortable that you don't want your child in that environment. Don't be afraid to say that. Don't be afraid. I own firearms. I'm a firearms instructor. It would be hard if I didn't. I don't object if somebody asks me if I have guns in the house. I don't object if they ask me how they're stored. I guarantee you they're stored very safely. But if even after all of that, they say to me, you know what, I, I'd kind of rather that you know, Max came over and, and played at our house, I'm not going to get them out of shape, and most parents won't. Relatives. How many people here have asked relatives? that you visit whether or not they have guns in the house. Okay, very small number of hands. It's an important question to ask, and if they're relatives, you can be a little ruder about it and say, get them out of the house. Okay, you know, it's a family advantage. Anyway, uh, Asking Saves Kids has some great materials, posters like the one that's up here on the screen, a discussion guide, some guidance on how to broach the question with somebody you're afraid might be offended. If you're not doing this, please do. This is part of our responsibility as parents. If you're gonna ask about a dog, and by the way, only about 39% of households in the United States have a dog in them. You darn well better be asking about guns, which, depending on the study, you saw 50% of houses have guns in them. Next, learn the basics of gun handling. Wait, wait a minute, I don't own guns. I don't like guns. Why do I want to know how to handle them safely? How many people here would know what to do if they were digging through their child's drawer and they found a gun? Okay, a couple of hands. 
How many people would know what to do if their third grader walked in holding a gun and said, Mommy, look what I found in the yard? Well, probably the exception to that. <laughs> Not many. Again, it seems unlikely but some of the greatest tragedies occur not when a child ignorantly handles a firearm or an adult carelessly handles one, but when an adult tries to render one safe and sets the thing off. Just little gun factoids for the evening. You've all seen automatic pistols. That was a clip that goes into the, goes into the handle. You can take that clip out and can the gun still fire? Okay. This group knows that more than many other groups that I've asked. It's worth it to understand some basic base handling rules. Always pointed in a safe direction. Safe is a little bit up in the air, but not at me and, and not at anything else that you wouldn't want to shoot is a good piece of guidance. Keep your finger off the trigger, that little hooky looking thing. Unless you're planning on firing, there's really no reason to have your finger near it. And make sure the thing's unloaded. This is really important if you keep firearms in your home that are not for defensive purposes and are not disassembled. Okay? Defensive firearms are a different story. There's a different way to keep those safe. But as a general rule of thumb, if it's not loaded, the likelihood of somebody being injured is significantly reduced. Lastly, and this is especially not only if you own guns, but if you need to talk to other parents or relatives about how you would like them to store their guns if your child is going to be present in their home, understand the basics of how to store firearms safely. Is it safe to flock? Or is it safe if it's a rifle and it has a bolt out? Is it, what makes storage for a firearm safe? This is up to us. This is not up to our kids. This is not up to our schools. This is not up to our friends' parents. This is up to us. If we as parents don't do these three things, then we are failing in that commitment that I talked about to keep our children safe. So with that, this is something that I'd like to offer you. In the last, I think I'm still on a 20-minute schedule. Great. In the last 20 minutes, I've talked about a lot of concepts, a lot of ideas, a lot of tools, a lot of resources. You're welcome to go away and operationalize these yourself. But I'd like to offer this school a free, and that's no strings attached, free two-hour course with that curriculum. I'd like to teach all of the parents here and the teachers, if they want to participate, how to actually teach that Eddie Eagle curriculum that I talked about. Here's the curriculum and the instructor guide. Let's actually walk through that. Let's talk about some of the conversations, some of the exercises you might do. Let's talk about some of the nuances of talking with older children. I've been able to give you a, a few examples here and there of issues that might come up in conversation, but let's spend more time together talking about more. And then let's actually talk about those three steps I mentioned that as parents we need to do to keep our children safe. I talked about them in about two and a half minutes. Let's spend a little more time. And by the way, in support of that, let's talk about those two things that cause a lot of people in the room to cringe. Let's talk about those three rules of safe gun handling. Make sure you understand them so if a child ever walks up to you and hands you a gun, and by the way, I train a lot of teachers who are worried about just that happening in their classroom. Let's talk about what you do so that you're safe, so your child is safe, until, you can dis until some disposition for the firearm can occur. I'm sure you well, probably already know these things. And let's talk about the practical aspect of safe firearm storage. I'm not going to ask how many people here have guns. That's your business. Okay? I can tell you in this neighborhood, more and more people are choosing to buy them every day. Many people don't understand what they have to do to keep a firearm safely stored, especially when it comes to defensive firearms, which by definition have to be readily available in case of an emergency. I'd like to talk through with you some of the leading practices, and I'll even bring in some of the products and show you and go hands-on with them. Now, this is going to be for parents and teachers only. You need to leave the little ones at home, or if it's, if it's something that MCS wants to do, maybe you arrange for child care downstairs like you have this evening. The focus is going to be on safety, no gun politics. Love them, hate them, I don't care. This really isn't about guns. It's about gun safety, and there is a distinction. No actual firearms. I'm not actually going to bring any, and nobody else is either, unless they are a law enforcement officer or somebody else under the 1611-130 exemption, and they're required to have them at all times, and then we're going to talk about where they stand. 
Every parent that has a child in the age covered by Eddie Eagle is going to go home with a workbook for your kid. And if you have two kids, you go home with two workbooks. If you have one kid in the first aid range, one in the second, you're going to go home with whatever the workbooks you need are. That's my gift. I'm also going to bring a lot more materials than I've brought tonight. The stuff that I've brought tonight for you to take a look at while you're here. I'm going to bring brochures from Tax USA, from some of these other organizations, so you have the reference materials in front of you as you figure out how do I talk to my kids about this. And lastly, I will give a complete set of instructor materials to the charter school that can either be used if NCS chooses to teach this as part of the curriculum, Eddie Eagle specifically, or that can be loaned out to parents if you have some form of a lending library for parents. And I'll give you all the DVD as well, so you can lend that out too. That's on YouTube, by the way, if you don't want to wait for it, don't want to buy, don't want to buy a DVD. I'm not going to ask you to make a decision now, but I will put that to you. Just so you all know, I don't do this professionally. There is no commercial tie-in. I'm a business management consultant. I do mergers and acquisitions professionally. That's how I earn my keep. I do this and some of the other things that I do for the community because I'm part of the community. So I don't want you all sitting here thinking, why, why is he offering to do this for us? I'll give you the best reason I can think of. My son's two and a half. In a couple of years, he's going to be a student here. In a couple of years, he may be playing with kids his own age that are the younger brothers and sisters of your older children. This is enlightened self-interest, too. I own guns. I treat them very respectfully, and my child will know how to do that, too. I want to make sure that your kids are going to be just as safe. So with that, I want to thank you very much for your time. And I want a couple of things. Number one, I'd just like to invite you to contact me. Uh, that email address is on a card at the back of the room. It's my Refuse to be a Victim card, which is a different program that I teach for free. Uh, but the email will still get to me. Uh, that's a list of my quote-unquote qualifications. That's who they are. Uh, and I'd also like to point you towards a couple of resources here in the neighborhood that are not necessarily firearms related, but since we are talking about safety, uh, no Victims is the website that I operate. When I get enough questions about a safety topic, I write an article about it and then post it so I can send people the article instead of answering the same questions again and again and again. Uh, and Safe Atlanta, I'm curious, how many people here know about Safe Atlanta? Okay, a couple of people. How about Safe Watch? You may have heard of that. It's gotten some press lately. Safe Watch is the largest all-volunteer neighborhood watch, cross-neighborhood watch organization in Atlanta. Um, there's a lot of things here that are not firearms related at all. Safe does nothing with firearms. Um, but there's a lot there that can help you keep your family safe, can help you secure your homes, and basically can let you live your lives. There are materials in the back of the room that you're welcome to look at. If it's in case it's plastic and display only, please, you're welcome to take a copy. And I'll stay here until after the next two topics, which I know are of uh, even greater importance, just in case anybody has any questions. Thank you very much.